One UI is what's next for Samsung's smartphone software. It's based on Android 9 Pie and comes with the company's biggest visual overhaul in more than two years. But as well as being prettier, flatter, and just very different compared to the earlier generations of the Samsung experience, it's also meant to be easier to use. Samsung's designers have an inventive new solution to one-handed reachability on super tall phones like the Galaxy S9 Plus here. But more than that, the early glimpse that we're getting at One UI here offers some major clues about what to expect next year from the Galaxy S10. So let's dive in and take a closer look. Okay, welcome to One UI. The visual changes here in Samsung's new UI are broad and sweeping. The old sci-fi look of Samsung Experience 8 and 9 have largely been banished, and instead we have something much rounder with chunkier icons and sweeping curves throughout all of Samsung's built-in apps. It's modern and more approachable and a bit less masculine than the old Samsung UI. The blocks that make up each of the Samsung apps and the system UI all have rounded corners with broad radiuses that mirror the physical curves of the S9 series hardware. You'll struggle to find any right angle corners outside of places where it's absolutely necessary. It's a very unique look, but you could argue that Samsung's gone a little bit overboard with the curves here in places like Bixby Home and the Weather app. It goes against the generally uncluttered look of the rest of One UI. So drop shadows and gradients have gone away, and even the lock screen has been simplified to such an extent that by default you only see a collection of icons for any pending notifications, which you can then tap to expand. If you want to see all of your notifications on the lock screen, that is still possible, but you'll need to enable it in the settings. Most of the preloaded Samsung apps have been spruced up with a fresh white coat of paint, continuing the trend we've seen over the past couple of years. There's virtually no unnecessary chrome or cruft here, except where it makes sense in the context of a contact list or a calendar grid. However, the major new UI tenet in this software has to do with reachability. Samsung knows that phones in general, and its phones in particular, are becoming taller and harder to use in one hand. So the solution is to move the things you interact with the most to the bottom half of the display. That sounds a bit ridiculous, but stick with me here. The way Samsung has implemented this actually works really, really well. Almost every Samsung app has this overscroll trick going on, where if you scroll up at the top of a list, it pops down to a more reachable layout, with the title expanding to fill the space at the top. You'll see this paradigm everywhere in One UI, from the settings app to the file manager to the notification shade to Bixby Home and the launcher. It's a great alternative to clumsily reaching up to the top of the screen, or using the optional shrunken down one-handed view. Are you wasting a little screen space to do this? Sure, technically. But once you scroll back down, the title minimizes back to the top of the display, so it makes sense. At the same time, the menu tabs that in earlier versions might have lived up at the top of the screen have been relocated down below where they're easier to hit with minimal thumb stretching. The Samsung launcher hasn't changed all that much outside of some new widgets and the fact that the icons it shows you now showcase the design language of One UI. The biggest change by far is the new look Bixby Home, which is unmistakably designed to fit into the new look Samsung UI. Oh, and look at this, Bixby Home no longer lags when you scroll in from the launcher. Fantastic, it's only taken us something like five years to get to this point. Anyway, being based on Android 9 Pie, there's a new horizontal scrolling recents menu to get to grips with, complete with redesigned soft keys that fit better with the new design language. When you switch apps, the current app pops over to the right to make the others easier to see. Other than that though, this is your standard Android Pie recents menu. Certain things are easier to do, other things like split screen mode and pop-up view are a little harder to find than before. Samsung's also built out its own full-screen gesture navigation system, which is pretty intuitive compared to the mess of other gesture systems we've seen from Android phone makers in general. It's pretty simple. Swipe in the middle to go home, or swipe on either side to go back or open the Recents menu depending on which way you have it configured. It's easy, frees up 100% of your screen for apps and content, and doesn't mess with the navigation within Android apps. And if you want, you can also turn on Button Hints, this small little bar-shaped guide down below, to show you where to swipe up for each button. What's also pretty neat is that even when you are using full screen gestures, you can still hard press on the pressure sensitive area at the bottom of the screen where the home key would normally be. That always works 100% of the time regardless of which app you're using. So obviously a lot of thought has gone into this, and don't be surprised if we see this gesture navigation system perhaps as the default on the upcoming Galaxy S10 phones. Next, something I know a lot of Android fans have been clamoring for on flagship phones, a full system level dark mode. The name is actually night mode, and as such you can set a schedule for this mode, or you can go light or dark permanently, whatever the time. This pretty much turns anything in One UI that's white by default into a black or grey, but remember it won't affect third party apps that have their own implementation of dark mode. 
Finally, Samsung's camera app has been completely redesigned. On the new firmware, the Galaxy S9 inherits the Note 9's AI photography features under the new Scene Optimizer tab, as well as Floor Detection, which points out blurry shots or blinking subjects after taking a photo. There are also new zoom controls. Instead of swiping the shutter key like you did before to get to 2x, or tapping the 2x icon, there's a new camera switching widget for quickly hopping between the main camera or the telephoto. Once again, looking into our Galaxy S10 crystal ball here, this UI would make a lot of sense for a three-camera phone where you're likely to be hopping between regular, ultra-wide, and telephoto on the fly. Beyond these camera changes and the refreshed UI, this is the same great camera experience we know from the Note 9, now available on Samsung's smaller flagships. One UI is likely to see some further refinement before it's ready to roll out on the Galaxy S8, S9, Note 8, and Note 9 families in early 2019. Nevertheless, this early release shows us a new design direction for Samsung as a whole, and an interface that's designed around bright colors, minimal chrome, and easy reachability for super tall phones. Meanwhile, usability improvements like the new gesture system would make a lot of sense on a phone design that's all about maximizing screen-to-body ratio, like these ones that Samsung's already teased back at its developer conference. If you've tried the current One UI beta on your S9 or S9 Plus, be sure to hit the comments and let us know how you're getting on. And subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube so you don't miss even more S10 and foldable Galaxy phone coverage in future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.